Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. I am here today to do something I think will be fun. I've seen this thing on TikTok where people who have BookTok accounts will just do one single TikTok where they look at one shelf and try to pick their favorite book from it. It's kind of fun when I've seen it. A lot of the videos are a little bit older, so I'm not sure how current this thing is, but I've been seeing it pop up and I thought it seemed a little fun. I figured the booktube version of it would be to just go through my shelves and pick my favorite book from each shelf. Of course, limiting myself to books that I have read. And then at the end, take that pile of my favorites and try to pick an ultimate favorite out of it and just see what happens. I haven't really worked through the details. Other than that, I figured this would be mostly fun if I just sort of did this off the cuff without a whole lot of thinking about it or prep. So we're gonna give it a try and see how it goes. So I have four different bookshelves. There are five shelves on each. I am not going to consider the books up top because there are my Franklin Library books, my Sue Grafton books, which you can't see, and just some scattered like Academy Award things. And then on this side, I have some rare or beloved child books and things like that. So I'm going to skip anything on top. So five shelves each, that's about 20 shelves, I think. I'm trying to do math quickly. So let's get started and see how this goes. All right, we're starting here at the beginning. Very good place to start. All right, I really like The Woman in the Dunes. Oh, I really like Call Me By My Name. That's a good book. A lot of these I have not read yet, and therefore can't. Oh, The Rain Heron is great. Handmaid's Tale is great. Oh, Pride and... I have not read Emma, but I really like Pride and Prejudice. Oh, James Baldwin. This is going to be harder than I originally thought it would. Um, all right. Pride and Prejudice is a contender. Handmaid's Tale is a contender. Oh, I really do like Call Me By Your Name as well. But, and I like the woman, well, the woman in the Dunes, but I'm going to say it's between Handmaid's Tale and Pride and Prejudice. And if you told me to reread one right now, I would go with Pride and Prejudice. So, all right, that is the first one. I have this ridiculous copy of this book where it looks like there's a ghost Darcy. But anyway, that is the first book going on the pile. Let's move to shelf number two. Okay, I remember Regeneration being great. A lot of these I have not read. Some of them I have. Oh, I love Fun Home. That is probably going to be it. Last Unicorn was great, but Fun Home is better. I love a manual for cleaning women. I love Don't Cry For Me. And uh, most of those I haven't read. So, Fun Home is the winner here. Okay. Shelf number three. Haven't read Fahrenheit, haven't read Jane Eyre, although I have plans to. Oh, I love Ruby Fruit Jungle. Both the best we could do. We do names. Master of Margarita is fantastic. I need to reread that one. Oh, I love Where I'm Calling From. I love My Antonia. Oh, okay. So we're looking at My Antonia and Ruby Fruit Jungle. I think those, oh, I do love Master Margaret. All right, we're looking at My Antonia and Ruby Fruit Jungle. Which one do I like? Ooh, I'm gonna go Ruby Fruit Jungle. Actually, Gift of the Body is a really great book too. If you haven't read it, I'd suggest it, but I'm sticking with Ruby Fruit Jungle from that. All right, let's move to the next shelf. We have the Netanyahu's, which I have not read. A lot of these I have not read. I need to reread the hours. Um, okay, this shelf is actually a little bit difficult because I have not read or need to reread the vast majority. Most of these I have not read at all. So really the contenders are going to come down to this side just because I've read and liked both of these Juno Diaz books. And I've only read Great Expectations. I really remember liking This Is How You Lose Her, but I was surprised by how much I loved Great Expectations. So I'm going to go with Great Expectations. Okay. Last of my first bookshelves. Uh, I love The Year of Magical Thinking. I remember liking this, but Year of Magical Thinking worked. Uh, it's 
Same year of magical thinking. I'm sticking with that so far. Uh, oh, I do love love medicine and the plague of doves. But I'm going to pick my first nonfiction book, The Year of Magical Thinking. All right. We're going back up there. All right. We start with Like Water for Chocolate, which I liked. I need, I need to reread Middlesex. But I remember liking it. Okay, I love The Virgin Suicides. Oh, I love Girl, Woman, Other. I'm going to lean toward that for now. Some of these I haven't read. Like that. Like that. My Brilliant Friend is great. Great Gatsby is good. Oh, I love Fried Green Tomatoes. Oh, no. Okay. It's all over. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We get to E.M. Forster. So, Room with a View, Passage to India, and Maurice or Morris. Um, I feel like, objectively speaking, Howard's End is E.M. Forster's best book, but my heart belongs to Maurice. So, I'm going to go with that one. All right, next shelf. Okay, Coraline is good, Good Omens is good. A lot that I have not read. A lot that I have not read. We're back here. <laughs> Absolutely not, <laughs> to less. Um, I do like Transcendent Kingdom. Okay, not a lot to choose from. So, interesting. This is the first time I'm having a hard time. Last Call is good. Um, I do remember liking the Curious Case of Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. Um, I haven't read the Greenwells. I remember really thinking Good Omens was funny. Maybe I should go with that. Oh, I need to make a decision. Okay. What am I going to do? I think this is a bit of an off-the-wall pick for me. I remember laughing out loud when I read Good Omens. So it actually is a tough call between this and Transcendent Kingdom. But I'm going to pick this. I feel like it's going to get easily knocked out <laughs> when we get to the next stage. But that's a problem for when we get there. Okay. Here we go. Have not read any of these until we get to Bang the Drum Slowly. I love Pictures at a Revolution, so that's a good contender right there. Have not read these three Hemingways. I've only read his short stories. I read Siddhartha, but I don't remember much about it. I do love Dancer from the Dance. I need to read The Rise We're Watching God. Oh, uh, here we go. All right. So it's between Pictures at a Revolution and the Cosmo Ishigurus. So I haven't read Pale View of Hills, but I love Never Let Me Go, and I love this one hiding here, which is The Remains of the Day. So it's between those two. And I'm going to go with Never Let Me Go. I am a huge fan of that book. Let me fix this because that'll bother me. Okay. All right. I need to finish Love Songs. Okay. I love War Trash. It's a great book. It was a Pulitzer finalist and did not win. And I love it. I haven't read a lot of these. I remember loving Jesus' is Son but I feel like I would need to reread it. I have not read The Known World. I liked The Prophets a lot. I haven't read Andersonville. And these are going to be no's. All right, so I'm going with War Trash. Really great book if you have not read it, by the way. Let me throw that out there before we move on to the next shelf. Okay, last of the second shelf. All right, we're getting into trouble here because I love One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I love The Poisonwood Bible. Like that. Like genderqueer. Oh, I love the namesake. All right, so it's coming down to the namesake. Ooh, Angels in America is fantastic. Let me throw that in the mix. Inter Interpreter of Melodies. I'm saying the namesake, and I mean Interpreter of Melodies. Um, Angels in America. Poisonwood Bible. And One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I have not read One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest since I was in high school. I read it on my own. I didn't read it for high school, but I... Um, I feel like I would need to reread it. Uh, I can't. All right, it's Angels in America or Interpreter of Maladies. And that kind of pains me. So which one am I going to pick? Oh, I'd love to have a tie. 
right here. I, you know what? I, as much as I would love to throw a play in there, if you told me to reread one right now, I'd go with Interpreter of Maladies. So I'm going to pick that one. That seems wildly unfair. Again, objectively, I think Angels in America is better, but I'm going with Interpreter of Maladies. All right, we're up to the next shelf where we have Nella Larson, which includes Passing. That's it. But I've only read Passing on this. Oh, I love To Kill a Mockingbird. This is going to be really hard to beat. A lot that I haven't read. I, I read Two Boys Kissing is great. Lover's Dictionary was great, but not going with them. Last Night at the Telegraph Club does not beat To Kill a Mockingbird. Neither does The Great Believers. I need to read after Francesco. Interesting contender. But I love To Kill a Mockingbird a lot. I'm going with that. Okay, next shelf. All right. Some I haven't read. I was iffy on Love in the Time of Cholera. I don't remember this one. I, I liked that when I read it. I do like... Bad Muslim Discount. Have not read The Razor's Edge. Um, I really do like The Good Lord Bird. I need to reread it, but I remember loving The Road. All right, so we're between The Road and The Good Lord Bird. I'm going to go with... I feel like I need to reread The Road. Again, I feel objectively it's probably better, but I'm going to pick The Good Lord Bird this shelf. All right. Next shelf. I feel like this is going to start getting hard. I really like Lonesome Dove. God, I need to read Rainbow Milk. I need to read Fugitive Pieces. Have not read Circe. I love A Place for Us. I love A Fine Balance. Yo, oh, this is really getting hard because here comes Toni Morrison. Ah. Okay, Song of Solomon is not here but Beloved is. All right, well, I have to go Beloved over A Fine Balance. I love A Place for Us, but I feel like I have to choose Beloved. And I'm going to pick Beloved over Lonesome Dove. So, all right, this shelf goes to Beloved, but that is a bloodbath because there are a lot of books on this shelf that I really, really love. And this feels like it's over before it begins because once we get to the next shelf... Song of Solomon is the very first book. So I'm going to hold this out. I have not read Women of Brewster Place or Half a Life yet. I love Like a Love Story. Um, oh, I love The Things They Carried. I love Hamnet. And Netherland is really good. I haven't read the John O'Hara's. All right, so do I... Song of Solomon over Hamnet, for sure. Do I pick Song of Solomon over the things they carried? I think I do. I think I do. But the things they carried is a really, really... Uh, it's such a brutal book. How do you decide? Uh, I'm sticking with Song of Solomon. Okay. Last shelf. They're there. I have not read 1984. I have read Animal Farm, and that's really great. Okay, and then we get into all the Tom Perotas, which are just fine. Okay, Elena Knows is great. We have the Elephant Man. Oh. You know exactly what's going to happen and how this is going to end. Uh, over Animal Farm? Yes. I love it. All right, we're at the next shelf now. I have not... God, I love the big show. It's about the Oscars, but I'm not going to do it. Uh, I read The Harbor. It was just fine. His Family's Coming. That's coming. Okay, I love Close Range. Not so much the shipping news, but I need to reread it. I haven't read City of Night or Kiss of the Spider Woman yet. Um, a lot of these I haven't read. I need to reread Gilead. I remember loving Midnight's Children, but I would need to reread it because I don't remember it that well. Okay. Close range it is. This is the story collection that includes Brokeback Mountain. That's my choice. From this shelf. All right. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. 
Aristotle and Dante discovered. Okay, hang on. I didn't see it up there. All right, that's my choice <laughs> from that shelf. Apologies, Annie Prue. I hope I haven't done that on any other shelves. All right, immediate contender. I know this is like a problematic fave, but I love it. Oh, I really liked The Power of the Dog. That was my favorite book that I read last year. Okay, a lot that I haven't read. We're going with Catcher in the Rye. Sorry, everybody. I love it. Okay. Okay, I love Mouse Volume 1 and 2. I remember liking Angle of Repose. I've heard a lot of critiques of it lately. I need to reread it for my Pulitzer Project. Need to reread all of Kidderidge. Love Shuggy Bane. Haven't read The Joy Luck Club or The Makioka Sisters or The Magnificent Ambersons. I love Overground Railroad. I love All My Puny Sorrows. And I love The Hobbit, although I didn't finish Lord of the Rings. I got into Return of the King and didn't finish. Haven't read my Tabines. So it's The Hobbit, All My Puny Sorrows, and Mouse. Okay, I think I'm going to go with... All right, I'm gonna, I love All My Puny Sorrows, but it's between The Hobbit and Mouse. I think I'm going to pick The Hobbit. That, that seems like a surprise, but I'm going with that. All right, we're almost there. I love A Confederacy of Dunces. I do need to reread it. A lot of these I haven't read or, or would need to reread. That's a great book, but wow, is it depressing. Okay, All My Kurt Vonnegut's love Kurt Vonnegut. Mother Knight is my favorite. So, okay, between Mother Knight and A Confederacy of Dunces, this is not something I'm going to take into consideration, but that would be really difficult to get out. <laughs> oh, color purple. It probably doesn't matter anyway. Because there's Sour Waters hiding back there. All right, yeah, it's got to be the color purple. So, all right, I dodged a bullet. I don't have to pull Mother Knight out of there. All right, last shelf. Haven't read Still Life. Haven't read... Oh, I love The Age of Innocence. I haven't read that Sarah Waters, is what I was going to say. Haven't read my Edmund Whites yet. Haven't read Stoner. I love Tennessee Williams. But I'm going to stick with Age of Innocence over them. Love The Yield. I remember loving both of these Tobias Wolf books. People in the Trees is good. I need to read Revolutionary Road. The Book Thief is Hiding in the Corner. I'm going to stick with The Age of Innocence. Great book and a Pulitzer Prize winner. Okay, now I just need to gather my pile. Okay, so phase one is done. I have gone through. I picked a favorite from each shelf. It's a little difficult on some. Now I have my pile of books. And I'm going to do this two at a time and just see what my ultimate favorite is. From the first shelf, I chose Pride and Prejudice, my weird Darcy Ghost edition of it. That is going up against Alison Bechdel's Fun Home. And already, I'm going to have a really hard time. I love both of these. I describe both of them as favorite books of mine. I am very tempted to say Fun Home. I haven't read Pride and Prejudice in a very long time. I feel like Fun Home aligns with a lot of the things that I love in literature more. But Jane Austen is so smart and witty, and I'm 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 already having a problem. I'm, this isn't fair. <laughs> okay, and Pride and Prejudice has certainly stood the test of time, but I think Fun Home will. There are aspects of Alison Bechdel that are a little too introspective. So, in this case, I think my personal choice might be Fun Home, but I'm going to go with the objective choice for which is better, and I, I'm going to stick with Pride and Prejudice. It hurts, but Pride and Prejudice it is. All right, so now Jane Austen is facing off against Rita Mae Brown and Ruby Fruit Jungle, and again... This just hits so much about the things that I love about literature and look for in literature. It's a coming of age about a young lesbian and about her experience and how she tries to make her own way in the world. And I really responded to that. But I just love Pride and Prejudice. So what do I do? What do I do? 
I'm going to be thinking for a while. Okay. And I feel like, again, when you start splitting hairs, there are things that are imperfect about Ruby Fruit Jungle, and I'd say Pride and Prejudice is pretty perfect. I don't think it's necessarily Jane Austen's best. I don't own a copy of the other Jane Austen books that I have read and loved. Persuasion is really good. But I'd say, objectively, Pride and Prejudice is a more perfect book. As close as you can get to a perfect book. So maybe... This isn't fair. <laughs> I should have thought about this in advance, because now I'm fighting with myself in real time. This one is even harder than Fun Home was. Hmm. All right. Just because I'd say it's objectively a more perfect book, I'm going to go with Pride and Prejudice, but I'm not happy about this. I want that on the record. I'm not happy about this. All right, so now Jane Austen is going against Charles Dickens. And as much as I liked Great Expectations, I think this one is probably the easiest matchup yet. I'm going to go with Pride and Prejudice. I really liked Great Expectations way more than I was expecting I would. It was fun and relevant, and I've always wanted to read more Dickens books. And I just haven't gotten around to them. So, all right, Jane Austen triumphs again. How funny would it be if Jane Austen <laughs> ends up marching all the way through the line and emerging victorious at the end? All right. Joan Didion, The Year of Magical Thinking versus Jane Austen. This is difficult because this is nonfiction. This is fiction. You know, this is memoir about grief and loss. And this is a, a social satire and a romance. And again, I, I, I feel like I really love both, but I gotta go with Jane Austen, so that's what I'm gonna do. All right, this is gonna be interesting. E.M. Forster's Morris versus Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. Here is where I think I'm gonna put Jane Austen down. I love this book. I read this when I was thinking of coming out, and I read a bunch of really depressing books that are sort of queer literature from the past, and this is the one that really gave me hope and made me happy, so I can't, I can't let it go that easily. So, all right, E.M. Forster's Maurice is my new champion to work its way through. All right, uh, now we get to Good Omens. It's a great book. I don't think it's on the level, so I'm just pretty easily going to put that one down and call it a day. Never Let Me Go, another great book, but again, I don't think it's on the level of Morris. Although I really love this book a lot. I definitely would call it one of my favorites. War Trash by Hajin. Again, I feel like this is a book not a lot of people talk about, and it is fantastic. It was a Pulitzer Prize finalist. I can't remember what it lost to, but it's a fantastic book. I would absolutely recommend it to you. I'm still going with Morris. And... Jhumpa Lahiri is not going to topple Morris either. I love it. It's probably one of my favorite... It's not probably. It is one of my favorite story collections. I'm a big fan, but it's not going to beat Morris. Oh, things get interesting. Harper Lee versus E.M. Forster. I love both. I've read To Kill a Mockingbird way more. I've read To Kill a Mockingbird in ninth grade, and then again in my senior year, and then like twice in college, and then once on my own. So I've read To Kill a Mockingbird like five times. I've only read Morris once. And what I appreciate about To Kill a Mockingbird is that at all the different points in my life when I have read it, I found something new to appreciate. But I'm still going to go with Morris. <laughs> And that one really hurts. It really hurts. Really, really hurts. All right. The good Lord Bird enters the fray. And I'm still going to go with Morris, although I do love this book. I think it's really fantastic. It says a lot about identity and racism and the ways in which racism and slavery take away your identity. Oh, wow. Toni Morrison versus E.M. Forster. Objectively, this might be the better book, but my personal preference is Morris. I think Beloved is a definitely intended to be a prickly book. I'm also going to put this one down because I think my personal favorite Toni Morrison is Song of Solomon, and I know it's coming, so that's a bit of a cheat. So really, it's going to be between Song of Solomon and Morris. And... Song of Solomon is a genius book. It does a lot of really great things. It is 
pretty perfectly embodies why Toni Morrison was a great writer. I think E.M. Forster is probably going to march through the rest of this competition because it's my personal favorite. It's in here. You know what I mean? That's hard to beat. Even for my beloved The Secret Lives of Church Ladies, I love this book. I would encourage you to read it. I think it's absolutely fantastic, but I'm sticking with Morris. And this, yeah. I love Aristotle and Dante Discovered the Secrets of the Universe, but I'm sticking with Morris. Oh, wow. Okay. Worlds Collide. The Catcher in the Rye was my favorite book when I was in high school. I was a very moody, depressed teenager. I was a white male with a level of privilege and just dissatisfied with the world. It was the perfect book for me to read at that time. I used to reread it every year. I totally understand this is not a book for everyone, but for me, who I was, where I was, when I was, it was everything. Morris became that book in my adulthood, especially as I came out of the closet. So two different books that have defined two different parts of my life. I'm going to stick with Morris. Catching the Rye will always be here. Problematic fave, I know, but um, yeah. And as much as I love The Hobbit, it's not going to compete here. I think it's a fantastic book, but yeah. Good choice. I feel confident in it. All right, Color Purple, great book. Alice Walker, a little problematic. I need to reread this. I need to reread this, actually. But um, sticking with Morris. That one hurts. That one definitely hurts. All right, Age of Innocence. Love it. It's really smart. It's Jane Austen level social satire romance. It's great. Absolutely great. I'm sticking with E.M. Forster. So, the, okay, look at that. My ultimate Battle of the Bookshelves champion is E.M. Forster's Morris. That was really hard. That was really hard. I should have spent a lot of time thinking about this before <laughs> I went in because I feel like I unduly tortured myself trying to decide a favorite. But in the end, I think it had to be this. It makes sense that it was this. I'm kind of glad that it was this. Not going to lie. So, if you have thoughts about anything you saw on the shelves or any of the other books that had been a finalist or about Morris, let me know in the comment section down below. As always, I really appreciate your time, and I will be back. Until then, happy reading.